climate change is, by many measures, the biggest challenge that we now face. Here in the United States, though, it's almost impossible to talk meaningfully about a political response to this challenge. We have known about the basic science of climate change since the late 1800s. It was on the political agenda around the first Earth Day in 1970. We're talking now a few days after the celebration of Earth Day. Um, at that first Earth Day celebration in 1970 in the United States, 20 million people in the United States participated in Earth Day activities. It's impossible to imagine that today, that you'd get 20 million people out into the streets, coming together in community to talk about and respond to environmental concerns. better part of 30 years I worked in the aerospace and defense industry. Had a secret clearance twice during my career. Some of the technology that I saw or you know, participated in the creation of tends to play a role in um, some of the, the things that are used to control the weather. The very distribution process is being employed in the aerosol campaign, manipulating the weather, crops, um, you know, taking over the, the, uh, the food production or controlling the food production. The military applications the process evolved when they realized in the, in the 1800s that you can put things into the environment that will influence the uptake of moisture and where it drops out of the atmosphere again. Also, the metal particulates, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. When the geoengineering really got in the way with the Russians in the mid-70s, we ended up with snow in Miami. We ended up you know, with frost deep into Mexico. You know, the bizarreness of the weather really exploded on the scene when, uh, when weather engineering got going in the mid-70s. The Dakotas, in winter, they recorded a temperature of almost 100 degrees, 94 degrees. It broke the former record by 32 degrees. There's very profound things that people don't notice. Blue sky is almost never. We almost never have dew on the ground. That's a known consequence of geoengineering, if they did it, which they appear to be. It sucks the moisture out of the atmosphere. It doesn't descend, doesn't form dew. We have massive temperature disruptions. People are starting to wonder, why is it 80 degrees one day and then snowing the next day at 50 degrees or 45 degrees and then back up to 80 the day after that? When you push and pull the climate with these, these manipulation programs, of which there's a lot of data to corroborate their existence, then, then you start to have massive fluctuations in, in the system. And we saw in March in the continental U.S. there were 15,232 temperature records broken. Yeah, that's profound. Some of the daytime highs, the former records were broken by as much as 32 degrees. Don't people wonder what in the world is going on? Whether they want to make it snow at 45, 46, 47 degrees. I remember when 38, 39 was a big deal. Those kind of snowfalls in the upper 30s. And now that's been pushed into the 40s. There's a patent called Ice Nucleation for Weather Modification. This is a patent from NASA. It can be found online in its full form. This patent is for the creation of artificial snowstorms from what would have been rainstorms. However preposterous this sounds to people, if they look up Chinese create snowstorms, they will find a, a, a long list of articles where the Chinese Bureau of Weather Modification openly admitted that they were creating snowstorms until they did a billion dollars worth of damage in Beijing.